late for that. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Homeschool Trivia Class. We are going to learn about some fun animals today. We're going to learn about narwhals and wombats, and then we're going to have a mystery current event. So, um, Katie, I did not confirm this before we got on. Are you ready to share some special days with us? Okay, good. Uh, sure I'm am. going to do that. All right. So, today... As soon as my thing will scroll a tiny bit more, is National Cereal Day, which I think sounds nice. And then we have um, Proofreading Day, which I personally would love to work with. Mm. Coming up on the 9th, we've got National Meatball Day and National Barbie Day. Very cool. I heard that today was something interesting, and now I don't remember what it was. Oh, it was like on the radio I heard it. I don't know what it was. Sock Monkey Day. No, There's a no, lot of different days. I mean, you know. I know. Part. There are. Yeah. All right. Well, I just put the links for the Narwhals Unit Study and the Wombat Animal Pocket Pack. Um, which are both free this week. So grab them now if you would like them ever. You don't need to use them right away. You can just tuck them away. All right. Are you ready, Katie, to get started? Yes. Yes. Okay. So you're going first, right? I am. We're going to start with narwhals. Okay. All right. I'm ready. All right. So I'm purposely not showing you a picture at the moment of a narwhal. But what type of animal is a narwhal? Is it a fish? A whale, an elephant, a mammal, or we have an E there today, a whale and a mammal. So what do you think? Put your answer in the chat. Jennifer was commenting on cereal day as well. Yeah. I love cereal. I don't eat cereal. I don't eat it much, but I love it. <laughs> I thought when I went to college and they had all mm -hmm. those like cereal dispensers mm -hmm. that you could eat, I was like, oh my gosh. It's like, yeah. Yeah. Well, college is very exciting when you see all the stuff you have to choose from each day. I remember they had all these different flavors of yogurt. That's what I was mm -hmm. Yeah. About. It was like, wow. All right. Oh, we got our first answer. And Peg is guessing E, and actually, I think Karen is too. Was not showing up quite. So we have two guesses for E. People are thinking that since I added E, that might be the answer. <laughs> All right. We've got three E's. Genevieve has given us an E. I love that name, Genevieve. It is pretty. All right, anybody else going to weigh in? All right, we're going to look. It is E. So you can see the narwhal there. And it is a whale, which actually, if you think about it, if you put an E at the end of the word narwhal, it says whale. So that's how you remember it's a whale. I don't know why that never occurred to me before. And whales are mammals. They are not fish. All right, moving on. Where do narwhals live? Do they live just in the Arctic, just in the Antarctic, in both the Arctic and Antarctic, or do they live in all of the oceans except the Indian Ocean? What do you think? And do you know the answer to this, Katie? I don't. I have an educated guess, though. Okay. Educated guesses are good. Mm -hmm. okay, so we have the Arctic, the Antarctic, both of those oceans or all the oceans except the Indian Ocean. What do you think? All right. We've got guesses for the Arctic. We have a guess for the Antarctic. Let's see if Genevieve wants to weigh in. 
Genevieve says the Arctic as well. All right. Those are the only three people guessed on the first one. And, and Katie says the Arctic as well. All right. You are mostly correct because it is the Arctic. So that is the North Pole. So I'm in a different place today and I can't grab my globe like I like to do. Oh, well. All right. So how do narwhals breathe? Do they breathe through gills? Do they crawl up onto the ice for a few minutes? Do they find holes in the ice to breathe through? Or do they have unique lungs that breathe underwater? How do you think narwhals breathe? Oh, we have somebody just joining us from Nebraska. And we have new people Ooh. answering on this one. Is Nebraska near you? Yes, it's right north of me. Okay, very good. I was just there uh, last week. Like you drove through. Oh, you did sleep over. That's right. Because I made the joke about Omaha. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So we've got guesses for finding holes in the ice to breathe through. Is everybody saying that? Katie... Katie agrees with everyone. Well, that's good because you're all right. Yay. They do find holes in the ice to breathe through. So gills, Genevieve, is that Genevieve that shows up as Jennifer? Yes, guest gills. So gills are on fish. So since whales are mammals, they do not have gills. They have lungs. Now, there is no such thing as unique lungs that breathe underwater, at least as far as I'm aware of. So that was just like a, a I don't know. A choice to lead you astray, and they cannot crawl up on ice. They do need to stay in the water. So they do find holes in the ice to breathe. If they have trouble finding holes, it, it cannot be good for the narwhals. It can be bad news for those narwhals. They need the holes. All right, how do narwhals keep warm? Are they cold-blooded so their blood just matches the temperature of the water around them? Do they have a layer of blubber underneath their skin? <laughs> Blubber's like thick fat. Do they just snuggle up to other narwhals to stay warm? Or do they grow a layer of thick fur on their skin? So how do narwhals keep warm? Because remember the Arctic is cold. The water's often covered with ice. So they're going to need to stay warm. We've got two... We have three guesses for a layer of blubber underneath their skin. We have four guesses for that now. Everybody's on the same page today. Katie said blubber, and that is all correct. It is blubber. This is a picture of blubber. Um, it is actually the Inuit people actually eat blubber, and probably some of the other um, native people up there eat blubber. So that's kind of why we've got some cut up blubber here. And it is fat that's underneath their skin. So because they're mammals, they cannot be cold-blooded. Mammals are warm-blooded. All right. We're moving. Oh, this is our last one already. All right. So we tried to put a lot into this question. What is something unique about narwhals? Do they have over 100 teeth? Do they live to be over 100 years old? Are the mothers pregnant for two years? All the women just cringed. Or are they one of the deepest diving mammals? What do you think is a true statement about narwhals and makes them unique? Do you know this one, Katie? Okay. I do not. All right. Snyder family says they're one of the deepest diving mammals. Ooh, so do Karen's kids. That's what I'm going with, but I don't know. All right. We got a couple more answers for deepest diving. Anybody else want to weigh in? Let's see. I don't think. Oh, no, that is from Peg. We got Karen. All right. We got Aaron. Okay, maybe everybody has weighed in. Well, you're all right again. You all did so Yay! well on this. They are one of the deepest diving mammals. They can go over 2,000 feet down wow. in the water. Like, they can go really deep. 
That's um, a lot. They, yeah. And they can stay underwater, like hold their breath for 25 minutes. But if you know much about diving, we went to the IMAX last week and learned about ancient caves and the divers that will go explore them. That was super interesting. But like for humans, if you go down very deep, you have to come up very slowly or you, you could die because of like the gases in your blood. But apparently they don't have that problem. They can just dive on down there and come back up. Um, they only have two teeth. Okay, so that hundred teeth was to lead you astray. They only have two teeth and one becomes the tusk in mouse, right? And because they only have two teeth, they kind of like suck in their prey when they eat. They are predators. We didn't have enough questions to get into what they eat. Um, they live to be 50 years old if, you know, they're a predator does not get them. Polar bears hunt them and so do some of the native people up in the Arctic. So, you know, fit, if they could avoid those dangers, the average lifespan is 50 years old. And then mothers are pregnant for 15 months. So it, it's a long pregnancy, mm -hmm. but not two years. All right. So yes, Peg. So there's two teeth that they are born with. Well, I guess I don't know that they're born with them. At some point in the first year, they develop two teeth. And then at about a year of age, the male, one of his teeth will grow out and become that tusk. The tusk is interesting because it's spiral and it's hollow. And mm -hmm. they have recently discovered that it's full of sensory nerves. So oh. they used to just think it was for like mating, like, you know, the, the male with the biggest tusk, you know, would Bring look. Well, yeah, like could show off. But now because there's so many sensory nerves, they're wondering if there's some other purposes to it. One theory is maybe they um, sense the salt concentration in the water and that gives them information. So they're not sure. It's one of those and the females don't marks. have that. Say again? The females don't have that task? Rarely. I think they have oh, found a few females that. with it, but it's very rare. Mm -hmm. I did not know that. Yeah. Elephants are pregnant for two years. Yeah. See? See? Be happy we're humans. Mm hmm they're big. That's, they've got a big baby to grow. They do have a big baby to grow. So narwhal babies are five feet when they're born. So there you go. Five feet? <laughs> yes. Yeah. They're like our height. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. We're moving on to wombats. Let's see if there's anything All right between narwhals and wombats. I don't know. Uh, let's find out. Okay. Here we go. So wombats. Which animal is the wombat most closely related to? A bat, a capybara, a koala, or a bear? So which one is the wombat closely related to? And look at that picture. Is that not the cutest thing? I, I, you, I think every time I study an animal, I just want to like keep one. They're cute. <laughs> I was say, I think you said that about the musk oxen as well. I did too. I said about a lot of things. Yeah. All right. So we've got bat, the capybara, the koala, or a bear. What do you think? I don't know what a capybara is. It is I mean, the world's largest rodent. Okay. I have a capybara um, pocket pack. It is, um, they live in South America. Okay. You didn't yeah. do them earlier in the trivia, did you? No, you did something that lived so. in Africa, I think. Yeah, but I have a pocket pack on it. Okay, so we've got some C's. You have mostly B. C's and one B. I mean, two B's. All right. Okay, so the answer is the koala. And there's a picture, which... See that picture of the koala on the ground? That's highly unusual for a koala. But I chose that picture because it gave the, the whole body. So they are both marsupials. So that's how that's what makes them um, us to say that they're closely related. And out of all the marsupials, this is he's most closely related to the koala. So they're both marsupials. Next question is going to talk about marsupials. So a marsupial is a special type of mammal. So like what Randy was saying with the 
with whales being mammals. A marsupial is a, is a special kind of mammal, but what makes it special? What is different? Or I, I want to say unique because I don't know if they're, um, I guess they are the only ones that do it, but what makes them special? What is unique about them in terms of other mammals? So is it because they have furry noses? They have a special sense that allows them to hear fish swim. The, I'm going to go over here so I can read it clearly. Um, the females have pouches for their underdeveloped babies, or do they spend most of their time in trees? What makes them unique or special in terms of being a mammal? Marsupials, what is special about them? They're into furry noses. Can they hear fish swimming? The females have pouches for their tiny underdeveloped babies, or they spend most of their time in trees. I assume you know this one, Randy. I do, so I'm not going to put the answer in there. Okay. I um, actually promoted this trivia class on my Instagram yesterday with a little quiz, and so I had to look up wombats to make my little quiz. So I, yeah. I've pre-researched some things. Yeah, a little, a little knowledge, yes. All right, so we have some C's and an A, maybe a D. I don't know where people picked up. It started with the B from Missouri Turtle and then okay. going down. Yeah. All right. All right. So the answer is the females have pouches for their tiny underdeveloped babies. So I will show you a picture. This is on the left-hand side. It's a little tiny underdeveloped um, wombat baby. And it's actually holding on to the mother's teat where it's drinking its milk. So mm -hmm. the marsupials give birth to these tiny little babies that literally just crawl right out of the canal of the birth canal. And they go right into the pouch where they can be warm and safe. And then they continue to get their nourishment until they're ready and they grow until they're ready to come out of the pouch. Some of them don't even come out for like nine months. So they're born and mm. they crawl into the little pouch. And then it depends on which kind of marsupial we're talking about. But this picture is of the wombats. So they're tiny, tiny. I don't think I'm giving anything away by saying this. Um, the A wombat baby is the size of a jelly bean. Hmm. Very tiny. That's and then on the right-hand side, you can see that's a baby wombat inside the pouch of its mommy and it's peeking its head out. So it's grown tremendously mm -hmm. in the pouch. <laughs> and gotten okay. fur and has grown fur. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. All right. So examples of the other marsupials include koalas and kangaroos, possums and quokkas. I had to look that, look that up to make sure I said that right. Wallabies and Tasmanian devils are all of the above. Which of those other animals are also marsupials? Meaning they have a pouch and they have little tiny babies that are underdeveloped and spend time in the pouch. Which of those are also marsupials? All right, we've got some A's. Maybe a B. Do you know B? Yes. Yep. That B is for this question. Okay. Do, do you have a guess yourself or do you know? Um, I'm going to go with A. Okay. Karen's got one A and one D. Okay. I don't know if we have everybody, but we're going to move forward. So it's all of the above all really? of the animals are mm -hmm. so check out this picture here you've got your koala and there he is in a tree mm -hmm. your kangaroo under mm -hmm. your koala is a possum then you've got your quokka they're so cute they're the ones that are like um then next over next the next one is the wallaby and then the one over on the right-hand side, that's a Tasmanian mm -hmm. devil. I did not know that that was a marsupial until I did yeah, this. I didn't know that. And yeah. And then, um, and then the last picture is of your wombat. So they are all marsupials. 
Hmm. See, we have possums that live around us because you hear me talk about our wild kingdom here. Mm. And I didn't know they were marsupials. Yes, so even American are. possums are. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are. I know. I learned something new every day. Okay. So next question. Wombats are... Sorry, I have to get over here and look at my other picture. Are they, ter and I'm not going to tell you what these words mean until after we do the question. So you can use some logic if you have it, or maybe you know what they mean. Wombats are terrestrial, arboreal, aquatic, or none of the above. So if you don't know what the words are, you might be able to use some clues about with, by looking at parts of the words that you associate with things, or you can just give a guess. But are they terrestrial, arboreal, aquatic, or none of the above? So we have a C, A, A, excuse me, A. A. Oh, Randy guessed A. Mm -hmm. If I guess, you can tell I really don't know. Because if I know, yeah, I don't like to give really, it away. Yes, yeah, me either. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. So we have lots of A's. And we have a B, I think. And a C. Aaron, Aaron a C, C. yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. So the answer, answer is terrestrial. Okay. So arboreal means trees. That, I mean, that means they live in trees. Arbor is um, a reference to trees. So like, cool, I'm going to I'm gonna wait till my next question. I don't want to ruin anything. I can't remember what I, I know what I have next, but I don't want to ruin it. A, oh no, there's a koala in the picture. Koalas are arboreal. They spend most of their time, if not all, in trees. I did show you a picture of a koala on the ground, but that's not normal for them. Um, monkeys would be arboreal. Sloths are arboreal, so they spend most of their time, if not all, in trees. Aquatic means they spend all of their time in the water. And then terrestrial is they spend their time on the land. Now, they some animals might go up in a tree on occasion or whatever, or actually get in the water too, but they spend most of their time just on the land. And actually, the, I want to make sure I'm, um, the wombat is a is a burrowing animal. So they spend most of their time under the ground. They are, they burrow. So they are definitely interesting little guys. All right, next question, last question. Wombats are native to where? And native means that they came from there originally. You obviously might see one in a zoo somewhere, but where are they originally from? Africa, Asia, Australia or North America? Wombats are usually, or are, sorry, are native to where? Africa, Asia, Australia, or North America? What do you think? All right, we've got some C's, lots of C's. Mm -hmm. Lots of C's. Mm -hmm. I'm also going with C. I'm going with C. Mm -hmm. All right. So you are all right. It's Australia. Australia. I was not trying to say it like that. <laughs> um, so wombats are naturally from the southeastern part of mm -hmm. Australia. You can see where I circled it right there, um, including the island of Tasmania, which is right below it like right in the um, bottom mm -hmm. part of the oval mm -hmm. is the island mm -hmm. of Tasmania. But I have a bonus question. Which other marsupials are native to Australia? And you don't really need to answer it. I'm just going to show you. Ready? All of those, except for the possum, are native to Australia. Australia has a lot of marsupials. And that's not even all the marsupials that 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 exists. There are some others, but so koalas, kangaroos, quokkas, wallabies, Tasmanian devils are all native to Australia. It's one of the places I would love to go visit. The possum, on the other hand, is native to North America. So that's the only marsupial that we have. Yeah, I'm confused by that. I want to know how that happened. Oh, I don't know.
Like how I, you have a, one marsupial here and the rest are on the other side of the world. I don't know. Very interesting. I don't know. I don't know. And I'd, Australia right. might have a kind of possum. Well, that's but what our possum. It could be. But our what we only marsupial we have is this one. But I don't think, I, I don't know if they have any, but I'll look it up. All right. I'm just wondering, there like, did go. one get on a boat one day? Come to North America. I, be. I mean, those, you know, invasive species, somebody brought them over. Right. I don't know. Well, Oops. Oh, yeah. This is where I want to be. They're all together. All right. So it is time for this week's current event. And this week's current event is Super Tuesday. Now, don't say anything because our very first question is going to be, what is Super Tuesday? So two days ago was what we call Super Tuesday. Tuesday. So what is that? Is it a day when everyone is supposed to eat soup? Is it a celebration of the release of a Superman comic book? Is it a day when everybody is supposed to work out and be like super? Or is it a day when many states held their primary elections? So what was Super Tuesday? two days ago. And Katie's not allowed to answer because I'm almost positive you know. This one I do know. Mm -hmm. All right. We have a lot of people out there that think they know. We got three Ds. Do other people agree with them? Karen's kids say the same. Thinking people have been watching their student news, maybe. All right. Yes, it is a day when many states hold their primary elections. All right. So now, what is a primary election? Okay. Is it an election to choose our prime minister? Is that where that word comes from? Is it when people choose the nominees to run in November's election? Is it a day when people register to vote? Or is it when young children, like those in the primary grades, are allowed to vote for leaders? So what is a primary election? All right, we have a B with a question mark. I think Jennifer and Aaron might be in this question with the D and an A. I'm not positive. All right. We have a more confident B. <laughs> I'm thinking the D goes with the last question. So I think we have an A and a couple Bs. Might be some deep discussions going on in the background. And some of these questions might be hard if your kids are younger, but it's good just to start building some ideas, some vocabulary for them to build on in later years. Because there's a lot to learn about how our government is run. All right, we got another B. There's a couple people that haven't weighed in. I'm going to go ahead. So, yes, it's when we choose the nominees to run in November's election. So, A was misleading because we don't have a prime minister. Some countries do, but we do not have one here. All right. So, we're going to discuss a little more what we mean by nominees. All right. Karen's kids. Kids. I'm thinking Karen was a grandma, if I remember correctly. It says the kids are making good guesses. All right. So if you, we had a primary in our state this week. Um, Katie did not. So what positions do you think were voted on at the primaries? Do you think we voted on president, Congress people, governors, all the above, or A and B? So we do not have a prime minister. Canada has a prime minister. Britain has a prime minister. There's a whole lot. I think in Israel, it's a prime minister, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot in Europe, maybe even outside of Europe. I don't know. Is that more a European thing to have a prime minister? 
Well, maybe from the um, when Britain had a lot of control over other places. Yeah, so they might. Maybe as well. that was like. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have a guess for A and B. We have, ooh, it's going fast. We got one for Congress people. We got President and Congress people. Congress people. President and Congress people. Congress people. Okay. I think we got lots of answers there. It's actually all the above. So on our ballot in North Carolina, we were voting on presidential nominees, Congress people, governor, a lot of the people that work with the governor, like Secretary of Education, Secretary of State. We had county commissioners even on some of the ballots, depending which party you were voting. So we had lots of people, state senators, um, lots of people. You might have city or town people on your primary, depending where you live. There were judges on some people's primary ballots in other parts of North Carolina. So yeah, lots of people can be on that primary election. All right. So you kind of already heard me say party. So what a primary election is doing is picking who is going to run for each party in November. So what parties might the people be running for? So your choices are Republican, Democrat, Libertarian, A and B, or all of the above. So what parties do you think? Just Republican, just Democrat, just Libertarian, Republican and Democrat, or all the above? I think we start with D. So we've got some choices for D. E, D, okay. So people know it's not just one. It is all the above. So you mostly probably hear about Republican and Democrat. There are, there's another small party called Libertarian. There, in some states, there's other parties like the Green Party. I don't know. There might be some other ones. Um, but where I live, that those were the three we had. All right. Last one. How many states voted on Super Tuesday this year? Sorry, I told you North Carolina was one of them. You might know whether your state voted this week. So do you think it was eight states, 15 states, 22 states, or 25 states? How many do you think voted for Super Tuesday? And while you're thinking about that, each state gets to have their primary election kind of when they want to. And so they don't all have them on the same day. But this Super Tuesday is the day the most have them. I think you said Kansas is until August, right, Katie? That's really, really late. I know. <laughs> I know. It's like. Yeah. I don't it think works I for other, state but... races. Or local yeah, races. Yeah, but I mean. Does it work no. for the federal race? No, by the time it comes around to us. I mean, because that's almost when conventions are. Mm -hmm. You know, the nominating conventions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have B, D, B, A, B. Okay. So we're all kind of all over the place. Do you have a guess, Katie? Do you know? I I do not know, but I, I want to say C. If not C, then it's B. Okay. It is, and we have another guess for B. It is B, although I put an ish in there because there were a couple like caucuses in states, which are a little different than primaries. And also the other interesting thing about primaries is some states have like the Republican primary a different day than the Democratic primary because it depends if the state runs the election or if the parties run them. So it's very confusing. So I think it was like 15 states for Republican and 15 for Democrat, but there were exactly some that weren't the same. same. So I really think it was like 16 different states. And then American Samoa was voting as well. So territories get to have their own primaries as well. So 
kind of complicated. That's why it's good to start talking about it early. All right, well, that is it for today. So Katie is traveling again next week. I'm going to be saying that a lot for the next couple months. So you might just get me next week, or you might have me and Melissa if you've come to trivia with Melissa. She's going to be filling in a little bit for Katie, and we're not sure about next week. So next week, we're going to do Northern Lights as one of our topics, and then we'll do another mystery current event. But I would say if anybody, see, Al is not here. Al has been wanting me to do chickens. If you have a request for a topic next week and you want to type it in there, let me know. I might take requests. So, all right. Thank you to everyone for joining us, and I will see you next week.